Next guest says, yes, let's talk about it with Evercore's Mark Mahaney, whose new book, Nothing But Net, is out today. Mark, congratulations on that. I know you've been working on it for a long time. It's good to see you. Thanks, Carl. Thanks a ton. Uh, so we're calling these hard-to-love stocks. Um, are they hard-to-love, and which one would you, would you like the best? Well, the ones you mentioned, uh, I like Facebook. I think it's a high-quality asset that's dislocated. And I like Uber. I think it's a future asset that's still misunderstood, and I think it's got an enormous growth runway ahead of it. What I tried to do in the book is highlight what I call DHQs, dislocated high-quality stocks. I think that's clearly Facebook, and it's dislocated given all that controversy. Uh, Uber has yet to prove itself as a high-quality stock, but I think it will given its market opportunity and just an incredibly strong value proposition. I wonder what you make of the, in, the growing universe, Mark, and I know they're not all in your uh, coverage universe, but names that are severely punished because of the outlook. Today it's PayPal, but it's been Peloton, it's been Chag. Names that are suffering from sort of dislocations that are lasting a lot longer than people thought. You know, one of the biggest questions I have when I look at these dislocations, these stocks tra trading off is, are we talking about a fundamentals correction or an expectations correction? The latter is what you much more want to step in on and buy if you believe in the long-term vision of the company. The fundamentals corrections you want to be really careful about. I'm on the sidelines on Zillow, and it's a stock that I downgraded. I got the stock wrong. Uh, I thought that they had a reasonable path to profitability, sustained growth in the iBuying business. They blew that opportunity. I blew the call. Uh, but that's an asset that will be interesting to track once we get through beyond the eye buying uh, 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 catastrophe. There may be something interesting on the other side. But that's a fundamentals correction when you have these expectations corrections like you had with Netflix recently, Amazon and even Facebook. You see those stocks can move up over time because investors will step in on any sort of weakness on what are widely perceived to be high quality assets. Hey, Mark, it's John. So uh, you like Meta but I wonder how are you modeling the metaverse? I've, I'm saying I'm a metaverse skeptic because people are lumping in things like immersive gaming with AR, VR stuff from the likes of Facebook that they've been working on for a while but hasn't really taken off. They've changed their name, but is there more reason than there was in the past to believe that this is gonna become a business in the near to medium term? I think it's long term, but, but John, you and I are living through a data point from this morning, from last night, that speaks something about the power of the metaverse, and that's Roblox. And you and I need to think about this young generation of people, younger generation than us, that are using Roblox and using it intensively. And what does that tell you about five to ten years from now, their ability to go from uh, gaming virtually to working and living virtually in presence? That, to me, is one of the more interesting data points I've seen. I don't know if there's a there there with Metaverse. I just know that with Microsoft and Facebook putting a lot of dollars behind it, I've seen fascinating uh, adoption and usage, really, of, um, of these Oculus devices uh, you know, that Facebook has, So I'm, I'm, and that Meta has. So I, I'm intrigued by the opportunity. It's a big bet, um, and it may be a little bit more sizable than I'm totally comfortable with. But I think Facebook should be trying to develop this kind of option value. So, yeah, I'm along for the ride on it. Also knowing that the core business, I think, is fundamentally one of the strongest you can find in tech land. Right, that digital advertising business. Uh, Mark, I want to ask you, go back to Uber a little bit. Uh, you say that it's been misunderstood. I know this is a call. You've been bullish on the stock for a while. But, yep. you know, Dark Hauser Shah, he's a real operator. It feels like he's applying the playbook that he had at Expedia, growth through acquisitions, to Uber. You say the market opportunity is large, but he's competing against founders in the space. Uh, I wonder if you think that he, with Uber, with him at the helm is in the best position to capitalize on that opportunity. Julia, you're asking the right question. I, uh, one of the takeaways I've had from looking at tech stocks for the last 25 years, and the track record is pretty clear, the best wealth creation is usually founder-led companies. Not always, but most times, and that's obviously not Uber. My, my, my hedge here is that I've known Dara, tracked them for about 20 years. I think he did a reasonably good job at Expedia. And there was just a lot of things that needed to be done to improve costs taken out, discipline brought in the Uber that Dara did. And then, of course, COVID came and knocked the heck out of that fundamentals of that business. One business is more impacted than any other that I cover. It's ride sharing. It's still dramatically below pre-COVID levels, but I think it will come back. I think the value proposition is uh, is really compelling, and I think Dar has done most of the right things: cut costs, reduce the the asset 
uh, footprint that this company had, sell off underperforming assets around the world. And what's going to come out of this, I think, is a super app, which I don't think is appreciated about Uber shares. So that's one of the reasons I like this stock. It's dislocated, and I think it's going to be perceived two to three years from now as one of the highest quality assets out there.